Thanks, Alicia. So the city of Vancouver recently passed a community benefit agreement policy. That policy comes into effect whenever a development in the city exceeds 500,000 square feet. If elected, where are these issues around community benefit agreements on your agenda, and are you willing to work with the community to amend and strengthen the CBA policy over the next five to ten years? I'd now like to call on uh, the two representatives from the Binners Project to come and share their question. You can either say it from there or come to the mic, whichever works best for you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Joyce. I'm with the Binners Project, and the question I want to ask was the current limitation around how much we can earn while working casually on welfare is a daily challenge that doesn't allow us to live with dignity. Hi, I'm Shirley Vivian. I work for Benner's Project. People living in the west side, east side Vancouver, Our property, our, our vendors are selling their stuff to make profit. How do you plan to help the community? Side are poor, they build and sell uh, and sell items. How are you planning to support this community? So this should be interesting. <laughs> With the uh, rapid retail and gentrification, 
an increase in vacant uh, sales storefronts, well, thank you, in the downtown east side. What solutions are you uh, proposed to address uh, this? And um, let's try these. Ah, yes, thank you. And ensure, <laughs> ensure that there are affordable, accessible spaces for everyone to shop at in the downtown east side. To David's question about community benefit agreements. Okay. All right. Sorry. Can I start again? Okay. I'm going to try and do them all. To David's question about community benefit agreements, couldn't agree more. One of the things that we've talked about in the in, in our working group is even assigning a point system so that not just bigger projects, but even smaller projects, and we assign points that reflect that sort of local hiring and local procurement in the actual design build of the, of, of the project. So similar to how we do LEED gold certification, we actually have a point system. To the bidders project, well first and foremost we need to pressure the province to up the welfare rates. That's a given. We also need to pull back on the clawback that they do when you're working. But a big part of our green platform is the circular economy and we see lots of opportunity to employ people in the capacity of upcycling and recycling and actually getting stuff out of our waste system. I've already forgotten the clean, oh, social oh, social procurement, right. So we, we are really interested in seeing us change how we do our procurement policy. It needs some updating to actually apply a more local and ethical lens. We also think that we need to take a, another look at our RFP program. So RFP is request for proposals. That often cuts out the local suppliers because it allows the big guys to come in there and bid over and come up with better bids and it cuts out the locals. So we need to take a look at how we do RFPs. And the last question was, Oh yeah, well so we've worked a lot on this project and retail gentrification is a big issue down here. So one of the things that people don't realize is that the Woodward's project, both the Nestor's and the London Drugs got a 10 year tax abatement. So we have the power to apply a 10 year tax abatement. Hey, Hey, I'm Adrian Crook, and I'm going to read off notes because those were five questions. But uh, So with regard to social procurement, I was touring a development recently where uh, part of their agreement with the city was that they would um, source 10% local materials and 10% local labor from areas that needed that, uh, that help from a labor perspective. So while it was very difficult for them to go out and find the, the labor force from those areas and to get those, uh, those materials, they were happy to do it because it gave back to the community. And we need to look into increasing those percentages and making more developments find their labor and find their materials here locally so that we can give back to the community instead of uh, all of it going overseas. And with regard to the retail gentrification issue, uh, some of um, my fellow candidates here have discussed this in the past. Um, split assessments for property taxes. So we're charging uh, legacy businesses or small businesses, mom and pop businesses, different property tax amounts than we are sort of newer businesses and businesses that can more afford to shoulder that burden basically. So those are the two questions I'm gonna pick out to answer. So David, yes, of course we would work with the community on strengthening and amending the community benefits. Just, I'm Shauna, and so I just wanted to make that clear. Um, the other issue that we have on community amenities is the inequity. You've got a really expensive situation. You've got different parts of the city that are getting different kinds of uh, amenities out of that. We've got to equalize that a bit and we have to make it much more transparent. Absolutely advocate like hell on the welfare rates. Those are just too low. And disabilities have been able to include more money that they earn. I think we really need to incentivize people to be able to have different forms of income as they're going through. Um, in terms of uh, the clean start, the social procurement, I've ran five social enterprises. I know what it's like. One of the biggest issues is that you can't charge 
more than what it actually costs for your labor and benefits. And you're not on an equal playing field. You should be able to charge your billable rates. That's a big issue. And we've got some work to do with CRA as well on social enterprises. And that's in a minute and a half. And I'm sorry, Chris. Hello, Mike Weeb, running for council at the Green Party of Vancouver. Um, this is interesting because obviously the welfare rates are a big one, but a big component is the clawback. Right now we have people that want to work, we have jobs that need to be done. We need to do a guaranteed job program pilot in Vancouver because people need to work to help clean up the city and to make it better. We also need to find pure work that isn't just with Mission Possible where they're cleaning up, but we need educational programs that can move them up the change because we have highly skilled people in this area that need to deal with highly skilled work that really motivates, motivates them to do more. Social procurement is a big one. Obviously procurement when the city has a livable wage strategy makes it difficult, so we need to find policy that makes it work that we can hire different people from different classes to do work around the city. I've been involved in hiring different social enterprises. I've been involved in the BIA on ensuring we keep our small businesses how do we change the taxation component? How do we work with our landlords so that our landlords need to be involved to ensure we keep the legacy businesses, the heritage businesses, and the small businesses? It's also making sure that the zoning does smaller storefronts like we've done in Chinatown, and we change the assessments, and that's working with BC Assessment on about seven different elements for taxation to make it work. Thank you. So a minute and a half to ask, answer five questions. I'm, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at these questions is that they're all of a part of a particular theme, and the theme is, is that people have been left behind, or they've been left completely out. And that is as a function of the fact that we have not planned around people. We have not had a strategic plan for the city of Vancouver to get us out of this situation. What we're hearing right now is a bunch of piecemeal approaches, and they're all very good. They're all part of a solution. But really what we're voting for on Saturday is not just one solution, but who is going to be able to execute on a plan effectively? Who is going to fundamentally change the way Vancouver City Hall does business? Will we finally pre-zone for more types of housing in all parts of the city? Will we finally unlock the $110 billion of mortgage-free equity in the city of Vancouver and capture that opportunity and put it back into people's pockets? Like our Vancouver housing dividend that will ensure that low-income families in the city of Vancouver will receive up to $500 a month when you're renting. Thank you, Hector. Bonjour. Well, first thing first, First Nation first, okay? Now, the, for the old people, the rent should be not more than $300 a month. The, the grandchildren are free for the new buildings, right? right? No grumpy little whatever. Okay, young people, we should have funding for them, for sports outing. The working class, we should come up about rent to own. Get rid of the landlords to rent to. Okay, so enterprise, waste. You should ask this councillor, how come we have city of Vancouver's property empty for five years? We'll make them for so enterprise. For first year, for the incubate new business, we have to uh, nurture an entrepreneurship. Okay, the contract to be tender, post, post it on mega form. Thank you, Mr. Chen. We can buy from LGBTQ vendors. We can make 58 West Hastings completely welfare rates. We're still going to have 13 and 14 year olds living on the streets outside. This is an emergency. We need to deal with this neighborhood as a community together and remove the cancer that this neighborhood is on this country that sucks vulnerable people in from across the country. Now, Denver, Colorado has proven a concept of hiring homeless people to do government services. They did it with around 250 and 100 of them went on to full-time work. This is what we should be doing. If you work for the city of Vancouver and get a paycheck from them, you have to be a union worker. We have to tell the unions, you need to work with us on this, get people working. I'd rather them digging holes and filling them back up than sitting around here doing nothing. Thank you. Okay, so first of all, I actually want to thank the winners. 
because um, I was in the process of doing an adoption for a baby and I had my wallet stolen with all of my ID and it was a binner that actually found my wallet, called me and returned my wallet. So I was able to adopt a little baby boy. So I want to thank them first of all. Um, so thank you. But I also want to say that, you know, welfare is just not enough. Um, they should, no one should be penalized for looking for extra work to subsidize their housing and to subsidize for food. We need to find new job opportunities, thinking out of the box to help people find work that is relevant to their skill sets. At the same time, we should be supporting procurement and also supporting a lot of the nonprofit organizations that do help people in the downtown east side. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, yeah. Michelle. Oh, sorry, Michelle. afternoon. So as Hector said, although you had five questions, the underlying issues are the same. Affordability and not a strong enough economy. So how absolutely agree we need to support people who are on welfare and wanting to work and gain their skills. We need to not only allow them to work, but give them better skills so they can earn more. And we do that by um, strengthening our economy. As far as community amenity con contributions, yes, we need to look at the fairness and ensure that they're being utilized in a way that where they're earned, that's where they're being used. So for the proper programs that we need. Social pr procurement, I was talking to someone uh, just earlier, yes, need to support more um, contracts for social organizations so that their goods and services are being utilized and we're putting people to work. And thank allow you. Me, thank you. Thank you. I'm going to try to answer all or as many as I can. So I, I totally agree with increasing the daily dignity of the wage for welfare and the disabled. I also think that we have a little, couple more pressing things that we should be worried about covered spaces and maybe some tiny homes or modular, space, uh, modular housing for a winter. Something that I can actually hold the mayors accountable to help alleviate the demands and the stresses that are immediate. I'm working with a harm reduction right now. I'm working with cannabis and cannabinoids. I see it's a multi-billion dollar industry. I do not know why people are saying that we're, the economy is bad. I see solutions everywhere I look. I just want to make sure that the people that need it most get access to the funds that will be coming down. There, it, there are harm reductions in place for opioid. There are, harm, there are places that we can use for the housing, um, solutions we can use for housing uh, by monopolizing the money that we would get from the cannabis. Okay? There's solutions where we can be, like, be creative. Thank you, Ashley. Uh, about two weeks ago, I, I partic participated in something called a hackathon. So with this hackathon, basically, they gave us a bunch of different case studies. And the case study I focused on, because I'm from the nonprofit and charity sector, was about, again, how there's all these nonprofits and charities that do not know the resources that they actually have. So one thing I'd be pushing for is open data within the city, so we see what is actually going on. Now, in regards to Binners too, when I did the 10 city, I connected them to Blankets BC, the organization, and we had blankets coming to the city, uh, to the tent city. A big thing again is how do you sit down and figure out as a city together the solution? So hackathons are something I'm pushing. It's getting different demographics to sit down in a room and figure out, okay, the bidders are going through this. How can we actually make this implementable within the city afterwards? Because again, I don't have all the answers, but I think collectively we can come together with the answers. So up the welfare rates for sure. And again, utilizing technology to connect us rather than to actually, um, I guess, make things have no transparency. So that's what I'd say. Thank you, Okay, wonderful. Thank you to all the candidates for uh, answering all five of those questions. I know that was quite the challenge to do in a minute and a half, but you did a wonderful job, so thank you very much. Um, we'll now move into the second half of today's forum, and that is for candidates to join uh, some of the different tables here, also people that are at the back and on the coaches. Um, so you can spread yourselves around, and you'll be going to tables, and anybody at those tables, whatever questions that you have that you've been wanting to ask those who might represent you, uh, now's your time to ask. And we'll give everybody about five to ten minutes to move from table to table. Okay. 